Good. What a response. Yeah, that's better. Awesome. Um, all right. Sounds like a lot of you are in need in coffee. Uh, make sure you go to Joey Sazza's if you haven't already and uh, tell them you're at Morning Startup and they'll give you a coffee thanks to the beautiful people at TechOn. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Scott Glue. I am one of the organisers at Morning Startup. There's usually another guy here called Dave Newman who's piked on me today for some reason. Uh, that's all right. And we hold this every two weeks, rain, hail or shine. We talk about startup related stuff. So if you're starting a business, you've got an idea, you don't know how to get it off the ground or you want to meet people in the space to you know, you know, find a co-founder or something like that, this is a good place to do it. So we'll have about half an hour of networking at the end of this so you can get to know each other. And uh, we'll have a cool presentation to get that inspiration wheel happening this early in the morning. Um, with Alex here, I'll get into that in a sec. But first of all, we want to know who you guys are. Uh, shameless plugs and announcements. This is your time to shine. You can stand up, do a little sort of 20 second pitch on what you're working on. Uh, do an ask, like if you're looking for someone or need some help. Uh, who would like to go first? I like the enthusiasm. Sweet. Just, oh, sorry. So just hold this up for the live stream. We're live streaming this, by the way. Morning, everyone. Stuart here from Connect. Uh, yeah, first time I've come here, so thanks for the invite. Um, and I run a no-code software agency. Small but powerful. Thanks. Small but powerful. Dot com. That's <laughs> 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 well, How do you find? How do we find out about it? Is there a website uh, we can go to? Knkt.com.au. Knkt.com.au. Awesome. No code. So if, if you're building an app and need to get it out there quickly, you can help and with no-code tools. Sweet. Easy as that. Justin. Let's go. Hi, guys. Justin Maxwell. Um, I'll back off of the back of KMKT. Once you've done the no-code and you want to go a bit further and you want to get some coding out, I'd love to help you out with that. We, we, we have an application company and we build on top of the no-code things. We like to help our clients get from that, so I'd love to work with KMT. KMKT as well. Um, and yeah, just want to try to help out startups and get uh, applications out the door. That's it. How do we find out about you? Um, you can get hold of me at justin at softwareforyou.com.au. That's software for you. Anyone else? Morning, guys. How you doing? I'm Aaron from the Gratitude Bear Project. Um, we've created an educational toy that helps develop kids' emotions from a young age by combining IQ, EQ, and EQ. Um, we have Justin on our team, which um, a plug for him. He is jumping on the back end, doing all the coding and everything he just said he does. Um, you can find us at our website, and from there you can find our LinkedIn, our Facebook, our Instagram, and our Telegram to join our community as we're about to do a big, massive fundraise coming up soon because we're um, jumping onto the metaverse to create an educational game that gives free education to people around the world. Wow, okay. And now, do you have a website or something? Yeah, yeah. gratitude.com. Gratitude. The gratitude bear. GratitudeBear.com. Awesome. Thanks, That's right. Oh, got so many. Uh, we'll come back. You're closer. <laughs> Hi, everyone. So this is Zan. I am a student of Master of Data Science in UWA, and I've started uh, something in my university time, the bachelor's, and I got funded by Red Bull, but uh, it didn't work out because it had a weak financial model, but I'm looking forward to making some of the most uh, of my product management and data analyst experiences that I have in Alibaba and different startups. So I'm looking forward to starting up by doing that some ideas. Thank you. So are you looking to join a startup or are you... Looking to join and also then start my own. And starting your own. Nice work. Okay. Matt. Hi everyone, uh, Matt here. I'm, uh, I work here in Spacecube, that's so nice to meet you all. I'm a startup coach, but uh, more importantly, I do a meetup called Startup Founder Mindset, which you can find uh, on meetup.com. Um, we're doing our next session next Thursday night here in Riff uh, at 5 p.m. It's called A Beginner's Mindset. It's about Scott Wovich, if anyone knows him. He's doing uh, his talk on his journey as a new startup founder. So if you're interested in joining, Come and hit me up after this, or uh, check out Start Startup Founder Mindset on Meetup. Thanks. That's work. Thanks, Matt. Let's go. Hi, I'm Michael from AU Skills. Um, we're a platform that helps uh, businesses that are running training, either online or 
a face to face training um, advertised for free on the website. So um, you can get us at auskills.au or just at LinkedIn on LinkedIn, which is AU Skills. And my ask is if anyone does deliver any kind of training, come speak to me because we can try and help promote your training for free. Thank you. Shining, awesome. Thank you. AU Skills on LinkedIn. Anyone else? Excellent. Hi, everyone. Laya here. Uh, I'm, I'm working as a social media manager. I have Laya Content Studio, so if you need any posts in your socials, you want to make them grow, please uh, reach me out. Uh, I will be happy to help you. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. All right. Throw some morning startup socials out there. That'd be cool. I'm terrible at this. <laughs> like Tuesday night, oh, shit, I'm better talk to people wanting startups on tomorrow. All right, cool. Any, sorry, any, any other shameless plugs or announcements before we move on? Okay, all right. And as I said, you have half an hour of um, chain to people at the end of this as well. Uh, if you're not a morning person, you, we also have this, Founder Sundowner, so it's on the first Wednesday of every month, so it happens to be next Wednesday, so come along to Nowhere Man Brewery in West Leaderville. It's just a super casual catch up with startup people uh, in the pub. It's a bit of fun. Uh, this is on tonight as well, so getting funded, closing the female founder investment gap. It's run by Startup WA. So Startup WA is our uh, body for state government, uh, for, for startups. If you have an issue that you'd like state government to, to be aware of in the startup and innovation space, uh, make sure you're a member of Startup WA. It's, it's free and they put on cool events like this. So this QR code is on Humanitics, but just turn up to the Claremont Hotel. They'll probably let you in. Uh, I think it's 25 bucks. Does everyone want the QR code? Cool. Uh, they also have another event. This is on the 12th of September. This is a pitch event. So if you've got a startup and you want to pitch it at the museum, that'll be fun. Um, no, you're shaking your head. You're not going to pitch? Ah, okay. Right. Well, it looks like it's a stringent criteria, so give it a go anyway and see if you get in. Um, or just go along and watch the pictures. It's a night of innovation at the museum, should be fun. Um, cool, oh sorry, do you want that QR code? Nice. Uh, all right, and we are live streaming this, as I mentioned, thanks to the New Industries Fund from the Department of Jobs, Science, Tourism and Innovation. Jitsi, yes, I got that right. Um, they're, they're awesome. They're helping us out with the beautiful folks at perthvideo.com. So if you need some live streaming services, hit up Perth Video. Um, but these guys at the department, they do a whole bunch of stuff. Um, innovator of the year, ways funding. Just, just go to the new, new Industries Fund and see what is on offer for Perth startups. Uh, there's the Innovation Booster Grants as well, where you can get some, some funding if you've got a cool innovative idea. Uh, a whole bunch of stuff where the, the state government is giving out funding to, to startups and a whole bunch of programs. Also go to wa.dealroom.co, put your startup on there, uh, as much or as little information as you want. You can put up your um, revenue figures and things if, you, if you're into that, but it's uh, a good way to get a bit of exposure, uh, especially with the state government, on what your startup is up to. All right, Perth Video, as I mentioned, head to them, get some live streaming, weddings, parties, bar mitzvahs, all of that stuff, right? Um, and Ammo, so Ammo have been with us, uh, by the way, we, we are volunteers, we get sponsors so that we can pay for food, pay for coffees, uh, pay for meetup fees, all of the stuff that happens for trying to put on an event like this. Um, Ammo, help us out with, with that stuff, so uh, head to ammo.marketing, they're awesome guys, if you want to hit the accelerator on your business and really grow, um, they can help you out with that. They also have a really good podcast, so if you're into podcasts, who's into podcasts? I'm into podcasts, yeah, cool, everyone. Um, yeah, go and subscribe to Weird Growth and you'll see interviews with cool founders. Beecham Group, if you're looking for talent or you need talent in your, in your startup, head to Beecham Group, they'll connect you with the right people. They're a boutique recruitment company here in Perth. Thank you, Glenn. And Keep Space, so we've got some food at the back, that's courtesy of Keep Space. Um, they, is anyone in like e-commerce, 3PLs, needs stuff like that? Mr. Newman's here. In stealth, with a hat on. Let's <laughs> grab a mic. You can continue. Well, um, yeah. So this is Dave Newman. He's finally turned up. This is my co-founder, my uh, my partner so I in crime. I'm not going to lie this morning because I live in Mandra. So normally when I come and do this, 
I'm going to have to leave at half past four or get up at half past four in the morning. So I was like, I'm never going to make it up here and drive up here in this. So I'll just tell Scott he's going to do well, it on his done. own. But made yeah, it. made it. It's been a bit of that ba- that morning. Um, I know Reese had a sleep in too and uh, suddenly had to scramble here to get the camera equipment up and running. It was fun. All right, cool. So keep space. Well, you, you do. Keepsace, if you're in e-commerce and you're looking for a final fulfilment, then check out Jesse and the team at Keepsace. Um, they've got offices or warehouses here in Perth and also in Melbourne. And, yeah, if you want to understand Jesse's story, check out YouTube or the previous videos because he was here a couple of weeks ago. He was. Yeah, it was the last, um, last speaker. It was really, really good. Um, yeah, so on the Perth Video Morning Startup page, there's all our past recordings as well. So check them out. Tech on. Tech on. If you're looking for a resource and uh, you're looking for developers or designers or anybody to make your uh, your proof of concept or your tool, then check out Tekken. Yeah, they got some cool developers and Haley's here at the back if you uh, need to connect with some, some good cost-effective developers. I've used them for fastview.co websites, shameless plug for me. Go and have a look at the website if you want to see what Tech on can deliver you. It's all complete custom Gatsby React stuff. Um, all right, and a bunch of supportive organisations. Startup WA, I've already mentioned them. Make sure you're a member. Startup News, make sure you're subscribed. It's the best way to get news. Um, Plus 8, if you want to learn to become a better founder, make sure you get on that accelerator, that bandwagon. Um, and TechBoard, similar to DealRoom, you can put up your data and make announcements on TechBoard, and uh, that will go out to their investor-heavy focused audience. Yeah, and uh, do, uh, do you mention SpaceCube? I didn't. Oh, well, if you're looking like for a co-working space, then check out SpaceCubes. They have uh, this space, Riff, Fern, and uh, Flux, uh, and Sydney as Sydney, well, and multiple yeah. places. So if you're looking to start a business and you're looking for a cost-effective office space or a desk, then check out uh, Space Cubes. Best Com- place to work. Who works here? Three, four. Cool. Nice. And do you like it? Yeah. It's good? Nice. It's worthwhile. All right, if you want to get in touch with us, we're Morning Startup on all of the things, including X. Uh, oh, I actually got my designer to update that logo, but I haven't used his slide deck yet. He's going to be very annoyed with me. Um, okay, cool. And that's formalities out of the way. There's a few shuffles. Okay, good. Yeah, that's good. I think we should keep it in there for... for <laughs> All right, so that's probably enough from me and us. We've got a very awesome presenter today. I think he's a Morning Startup veteran, right? You've done this a few times now, been on, been on stage and delivering good insights for, for Perth Startups. Um, Alexander is a, you call yourself a fractional CTO. So you work with lots of different startups doing the CTO role. And through that, you've learned a lot about visual management, Kanban, flow, lean principles, all of this good stuff that we should be using to manage our work, and he's going to take us through all of that. Because I'm using Trello and, and that stuff, but it's all the processes around that, like the tool's only one part of it. So really looking forward to this. Please make me welcome Alexander Zibkov. Thank you. All right. Let's uh, see if this works. Yeah. Sorry, I'll just hit the thing. Maybe just reconnect it. No, I didn't connect there. How do you go back? Do you need to get to the client deck again? Just... Yeah, I brought my laptop, but I didn't bring an um, adapter for... Uh, it should present with remote. Yeah. And start remote. It's always a way. It works with the testing, <laughs> but then when you actually get to the... All right, I'm going to give up and uh, I just use uh, buttons. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, that's right. Um, well, like I call myself fractional CTO. That's what I want to be. I uh, work with startups. If you have a um, need for someone to you know, look after your technical things and uh, I have some capacity, I can I help people. And... Um, I like it. I, I love the you know environment and the energy of it. And uh, I just started doing a mentorship for Plus Eight Accelerator. Great guys. Uh, is it still on? Oh, oh okay. Yeah, okay. Um, don't use the mics. Um, 
Anyway, but uh, from my experience with uh, Plus 8 Accelerator, right, uh, I talked to guys and I um, kind of amazing to me um, there is no, no understanding of it. Uh, it's, it's kind of very basic, whatever I'm talk about, it's very basic and maybe you know about this and nothing, nothing out of, you know, ordinary. But uh, sort of people coming up, starting to work, they don't quite, I guess, know. Um, and visual management, you don't need to read this book, I just love the title. It's all about learning to see. You know, you already have your process. Somehow you go from idea to value delivered to customer. There is a process, there are steps along the way. But you might not see it, you might not know it, it just happens, right? And when it happens, you, you cannot improve it because it's hidden, right? Just learning to see, lay it out and understand what's happening, how do we get from idea to value delivered to customer. And if you're working with a team, it's a great tool for everyone to understand it. Right? Everyone is on the same page, everyone see what's happening, how do we go and deliver value. All right, closely related lean principles right, to this, how do we deliver stuff? First, you identify what you want to do. You obviously want to do the most important things. And second, you, you just do it, right? It's all good? Yeah. Yeah. So it's all about creating flow of value, right? You, um, it's a, it, it came from uh, uh, Toyota management, uh, Toyota lean manufacturing you know, principle. That's how Toyota got so big because they use this idea of if you know what you want to do, the most important thing, the most valuable thing, and you get it done, and you keep doing this, just delivering value as a flow, that's all you need to do, right? That's a very basic principle. And if you don't know who Joko Willing is, you definitely should uh, look him up and then follow. Uh, it's a Navy SEAL commander. Exactly the same thing, prioritize and execute. That's all you need to do. You need to know what's the most important thing, prioritize all your work, everything what happens around you. You just take one thing and get it done, and get it done, and keep moving, and keep, keep the flow going. And now I decided to work, okay. Um, so another principle uh, when you're learning to see is to make work visible, right? I kind of talk in this little, um, catchy phrases, uh, phrases, right? But uh, it's easy to remember. Make work visible, it's important. Lots of work is hidden. Like founders, they hire developers, they don't know what developers are working on, you know? Like I spoke to a uh, founder, he said, no, we have this bug in, in, uh, in the app, and it's kind of annoying, it's a little thing. But I keep talking to developers, they're not fixing it. I'm saying, yeah, because they're working on more important things. You don't even know what's the most important thing in your application, in your app, right? You need to make work visible. You know, it's about transparency. It's about everyone understanding what's happening. Okay, I'm good. Oh. All right, how do we do this? Very simple, very easy. There are lots of different tools. And this is called Kanban board, right? It's just to do, doing, done. This came from Trello. Trello is free. It's awesome. If you don't use anything, you just start with Trello. Lots of others, doesn't matter what, what you use. You can use uh, you know, sticky notes on, on the board, like physical board, whatever, whatever you do. It has to be visual, you know, it, it's visual. It's just uh, information radiator. It shows you what's happening, right? It, it just, you, you can glance at it and see what's happening in your value delivery system, right? It doesn't have to be complicated. It has to be like at a glance, visually, bang, okay, I got it, you know? When you put too much stuff in it, it becomes, you know, very uh, convoluted and you have to dig through this, it's not gonna work there as well. So simplicity, easy to understand and visual. It has to be relevant as well. You don't do it like once a month, 
in software development, what we do, we every day we look at the board, right? Everyone, we have tasks on the board, they're assigned to people, people working on them. The whole team gets together every day and look at it. What do we see? Is anything stuck? Any bottlenecks? Work bunching up, work not moving. That gives everyone, like everyone on the same page, right? Everyone on the, uh, having the same information. And you, you review and you act. And you, like, the board has to flow, it has to move. If something is stuck, that's the problem, right? That's the problem you need to address. It's not just kind of um, for no reason you, you, you keep it, you know. It has to be relevant and has to be updated and you review and act on information. Now, we all want to like change the world and do big things. These tasks, they need to be small, right? It's like, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. You don't put, eat an elephant on the board, right? Because it's, it's never gonna move, it's gonna get stuck for a long time. You need to create momentum, it, it needs to flow, right? And when you keep moving things, usually I would say, you need to update it like once or twice a day, every day. Because when you get to done, you feel a sense of accomplishment, right? Something happens, something's done, we're done. You, you get your dopamine hit, you know. It helps you to keep going. It creates momentum. And as we know, things in motion tend to stay in motion, right? It's very hard to start going, but when you start it going, when you keep going and you see it happening, happening, and your, your tasks are flowing, your value delivered, your done column grows, it's very rewarding. People love it. That, that gives you a uh, good feeling and, and you want to keep going. And yeah, it creates a sense of progress. Okay. We spoke about prioritization. Right? How do you prioritize? You don't have a high priority, super high priority, very high priority, right? Like categories. You prioritize this to do column, top down. The highest priority thing on top Less priority, less priority, less priority. And what, what it allows you to do, every new task, you just match it against, where, where do you put it on the board? You match it against uh, specific other tasks, right? And then it's aligned nicely top down, and then when you want to start working on something next thing, you start from the top, right? You always take from the top and you always prioritize. And you keep doing it all the time. Slightly off topic, but people usually ask, how do you prioritize? Okay, um, you can use these uh, three angles to look at, at your tasks. Desirable. Do your customers want this? Do you want this? Anybody wants this? You know, that thing to be delivered. Feasible, can we do it? You know, but lots of things, people want them and we can't do, pretty much anything can be done, it's just we're constrained by resources, right? And that's why, should we, should we do this? Can we make money out of it? Does it deliver us value, right? Even if people ask for something, we can do it, it doesn't mean we should do it, right? So you look at all three, like the best value in the middle, and uh, what we do in software, we um, size everything in uh, t-shirts. Like it, you say, if this task was a t-shirt, would it be small or medium or large? Some things extra large, some like extra small. But you say, okay, it's uh, highly desirable, you know, low feasibility, high value, whatever you prioritize. But prioritization, very easy. It's extremely easy. Because when you compare things, if difference is big, you know what to do. Right? If difference is small, it doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter. Just, just don't get stuck on it. Just put everything in one column and take from the top. Okay. Sorry, technology. 
So this is Kanban as different board, same thing, Kanban board. To do, doing, done, it's, it's pretty simple. You usually more go more granular, right? In software development, we go like a analysis, you know, development, testing, like quality assurance, blah, 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 different stages. And like I said, you have these stages and steps in your process, whatever you do. Some of them actually don't deliver value, like productive and non-productive states. Like this one, waiting for review, it's not really a productive one, right? Because nothing is happening. You, you want to like, move your value and have a flow, but you want to work on actually, actually do something, right? If you wait for, for something to happen, it's not a productive state. And you can see where your non-productive states are productive states. But also you can see the bottlenecks, right? very easily. When you have too many tasks in one column, that's your bottleneck. What's important about it, because you want to improve your, your flow, your speed of delivery, depends on your bottleneck. Bottleneck restricts your flow. It's like a flow of water through the pipe. Same thing. Everything moves with the speed of bottleneck. What it means, if you want to improve, your flow, you need to improve bottleneck. If you improving like other things, it's a waste. Because if you start improving this, this working, like let's say we have this development process and we focus on developer productivity, but everything got stuck in quality assurance, it's a waste of effort to improve anything but bottleneck. So first you need to see your bottleneck, you need to understand where it is, and then you put effort into that. All right, how do you move stuff? There are two ways, like push and pull. Traditional sort of command and control, you push work on people, right? It comes from the top, from the management, say, okay, you do this, you do that, keep, go, do, right? That's pushing work on people. What the best method is pull system. When resource becomes available, I'm a developer, I finish my task, I'm available, I want to do something else, I pull work from that uh, to-do state, right? So I'm a designer, I work on this work in progress, I'm done, I look what, what's next. It's prioritized top-down, I take from the top, and I pull it in progress, and I start working on it, right? It helps it helps with uh, people being um, accountable for their work and they're working on their own terms, right? They complete the work, they're happy with what they've done, they take a new work, right? When you start pushing work on people, they have conflicting priorities, they don't know what to do exactly, jumping around, um, and uh, it just leads to you know, burnout and people not being happy about this work, the, the work they do. So now you see the number of columns keeps growing, and that's fine, because it's all about learning to see visibility of work, surfacing the process, right? So let's say this, this uh, work is something to do with content and delivery, right? Uh, so you, you have this to-do column, or you can like, call it waiting, waiting for something, or ready, ready for something, right? Column ready for content creation. Person who does content, pick it up, put it in progress, start working. When he finishes, he goes, okay, ready for design or waiting for design stage, right? So a few more principles. You want to limit work in progress. It comes from lean manufacturing. You need to make sure do we have? No, we don't. There are, there are no, uh, oh yeah, okay, so it's like how many work items here? Three, six, four, right? So you want to limit that, that number. Because people cannot really multitask, cannot jump around different, doing different things at the same time, right? 
a person only work on one time on one task and you need to allocate all the time and resources that person need to complete the task otherwise that context switching is going to kill you because people start jumping around between different tasks nothing gets done so what you do when, when you look at this board you see okay who is doing too much where is the um, that multitasking happening so we just limit work in progress that's important and you use the yeah, pull pull system um, okay the whole thing is flow right we want to optimize for flow of value how do we do this eliminate waste all these non-productive states they they are waste and uh, also quite a lot of work you do if it doesn't deliver value to customer it's considered to be waste the like Japanese uh, that uh, Kanban uh, system they use different words it's not like exactly waste because it doesn't translate exactly but anything with any activity which doesn't deliver value to customer considered waste right if customer is not going to pay you for that you you're wasting your effort but let's say accounting nobody going to pay you for accounting customers don't care how much accounting you do it's waste but you have to do it right so these things like planning like nobody customer is not going to say oh you've done so much planning i give you extra money no they don't care it's a waste you might have to do it but you need to minimize it you need to think about this which activities are actually deliver value to customer and which are not right so elimination of waste and like um, work in progress is waste as well because you already put effort into this into this work into this task but you can't get value out of it you cannot sell it your customer can't get value because it's not done yet and if it's not done it's a waste of time and effort you put into this right so that's why you limit work in progress because you, you want to eliminate waste and you want to eliminate this context switching right that's second uh, one limit work in progress work in small batches in Toyota manufacturing they do just in time they they very they don't have much inventory uh, they deliver in small small bits and pieces again it's about like eating elephant one bite at a time um, and in in software what we do we we run this you know sprint cycles whatever we want to deliver as quickly as possible and to deliver as quickly as possible you need to have smaller tasks in startup world everything's uncertain right you deal with uncertainty you don't know if it's going to work you, you know nothing when you start you have just idea oh maybe this work maybe it, but everything uncertain what you want to do you want to reduce your uncertainty right and then you work with hypothesis you say okay what if we build this feature would people pay for it you have this hypothesis you want to prove it or disprove it right you want to get to done as soon as possible so you can learn and that's why smaller tasks give you faster time to learn to, to get the feedback right if you like put change the world you know you don't know when, when it's going to happen and it's it doesn't create momentum like um, definitely definitely break all your tasks in uh, smaller smaller tasks but um, everything should be you know made as small as possible but not smaller yeah you don't want to update the board every 15 minutes right but like twice a day you know three times a day it, it's fine you just need to keep updating it so the tasks they move and they create that momentum and um, the flow another important concept is definition of done for every column you need to be clear what does it mean to be done what are the conditions for you to move it to the next one right and you need to do it up front because what often happens 
like, is it done? It's almost done. It's almost done. And people don't know what, what does it mean to, to be done, right? And they keep working and working on it and working. Like you ask for prototype, but people, you know, put a lot of effort and make it really robust and scalable. You don't want scalable and robust. You want prototype, you want to try it, right? So you need to tell upfront that's the conditions for this task to be considered done, right? And usually we have it on every column say, okay, Development is done when, you know, all the unit tests run, code completed, it pushed to whatever environment, blah. You know, quality assurance done when all the bugs reported and blah, 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 yeah? Uh, design is done when, you know, we have this uh, layout, whatever, uh, wireframes or whatever. And you want, like, you want to push, you want to get done, you want to get done as soon as possible to create this flow. And what we call it cycle time. Minimize cycle time. Um, I think uh, I'm going to talk about metrics. <coughs> okay, so I think we spoke about waste. Yeah, in Japanese it's muda, uh, muda but uh, there are different types of waste. You can uh, Google, um, yeah, uh, types of waste, lean, and one of them muda. Okay, how do you know that your Kanban, your visual board is working? You can use this matrix. First of all, like I said, work in progress limit. You see, you set up these limits. Um, you set up them on every column, but also in general. You don't want to have too much stuff in, in, in progress, right? And um, when, uh, like, again, I'm from software development. In software development, we have these multidisciplinary teams and people, like, from quality assurance, from developers, they all work together in one team. And let's say if uh, there is a bottleneck in the quality assurance, then developers might jump over and help. You know, designer might just come in and help. Uh, just because this is bottleneck and we need to address the bottleneck, right? And work in progress, um, you consider, like, every column, but also everything going from, well, when you start working, when you pull the work item from to do and it's not in done, the whole board, right? It's still work in progress, it's still waste. So cycle time tells you how long it takes you from starting work to finishing. That There are lots of different uh, names for this metric. Um, for example, we can measure how long it takes from when developer finished developing work to running production, right? And we use CI/CD pipelines and DevOps and all these things to, to speed it up, right? So you can measure that cycle time, not from the start, but from any, any point in time, right? And you can measure how long it takes you to do design work, let's say, how long it takes you from, from start to finish, right? Uh, but in general, yeah, cycle time, how long it takes you to complete work. And throughput. Throughput is how much stuff you push through the system. You know? So if you optimize for these three, your system will work, value will flow, everything will, will, will get you know, done. And that's like your you know, sausage machine. If it works fine, you just feed it with, with your tasks, with most important first, and it, it gets them to done, right? Uh, that's it. Oh. I think I, I might have jumped around with this technology, but it, like, it's very basic. You know? There's nothing groundbreaking. Make work visible, limit work in progress, focus on flow, get things to done. Break work into smaller pieces, it helps. Uh, connect with me on LinkedIn, and if you like, want to have a chat or coffee, uh, I'm okay. I'm really, really looking forward to it. And um, yeah, any questions? Any? Oh, thanks, guys. Yes, yeah, no, first. Yeah, I'm always paid.
Hey Alexander, thanks so much for signing up and giving us that today. Really appreciate it. What I'm interested to know is, are you selling consultative services for yourself or are you promoting Trello as a tool? I didn't quite get that from the presentation. Just want a bit more clarity if you could. Thank you. No, no, no. I'm not promoting tool. Like, uh, uh, you've seen screenshots from different tools. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. Trello, Atlassian, Jira, Kanban is like, doesn't matter. Tool doesn't matter. The principles matter. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. No, not so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a question. Uh, I just yeah. do it because I love it. Uh, yeah. you know, love talking to people, yeah. Hi, and the question is like, uh, I've been with the software developers for a long time, and long, lots of times we face like problem with how small should the task be, and how small should, can it be actually uh, be made? So let's say that for an app, we need some foundation works, and that is maybe it's a longer task for one developer. So how do you suggest to splitting those things into smaller chunks that actually is not that much splitable, yeah. but that actually blocks the other pipelines, you know? That's right, yeah. So sort of you, you have to do it, and uh, there are lots of uh, ways, and like if we talk about development, we actually want to uh, work in vertical slices, right? We want to do front end, back end all together. Uh, I don't know if people are interested in this, but you know, just think about this. You want to break it down as, as a sort of principle. You know, you want to deliver something, and also deadlines are good for that, right? So when you tell developer, okay, I have this problem, I want to achieve this objective, what can you do in two weeks? You know, you don't ask for scope. You you say that's the deadline. And it's short, no more than six weeks. Nobody can look f beyond six weeks, right? Like two or three weeks, that's okay. And you say, okay, and they say, okay, I, I can give you a prototype, and prototype is what you want, you know? And then you improve, and you improve, improve. And it, it's gonna flow, you know? It, nothing should get stuck for weeks without moving on a board, yeah? But, uh? Weeks? Oh, yeah, I would, no, no. It needs to be daily. It needs to be daily. Daily something needs to happen. You know, like uh, maybe you don't release it to customer for two weeks, but internally you need to see progress. Yeah, and we have daily meetings when we daily look at the board and say, okay, this seems to be stuck. If something did move for two days, that's the red flag already. Maybe not red, but yellow. Yeah. Good question here. Uh, hey, Alexander. Uh, first, great talk. Uh, second, my question is, would you suggest there be a Trello board for like a team separate and a Trello board for like me individually separate? Because yeah. we had a Trello board for a company and it got really convoluted. Because I think it was also just the startup space. Everyone kind, kind of wants to do everything. Yeah. And it, everyone just started jumping into so yeah. yeah, that was kind of an issue. And yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. You, you want to make work visible, and you want everyone to understand what's happening. So, like, there might be reasons to have multiple boards or separate boards to, to keep it simple so people can look at it and understand. It's all about information sharing and having the same understanding of work in progress, bottlenecks, all these things. It has to be practical and has to be usable. It's not just for, you know, for no purpose. You want to minimize waste because this is the waste as well. Nobody going to pay you for this. You want to do it effectively, efficiently, but also you want to share information. But if you have other like developers or other teams working, usually they would like to know what's happening in the management. What, what are you thinking about? What, what are the priorities? Like, even looking at this to-do list, they can look forward and say, oh, that's a lot of work coming in. I, I shouldn't be worried about my position. That's what we're going to do. And when they look at it, even for current work they do, they can do it keeping in mind future, right? Well, what's coming? So I would say, yeah, it definitely needs to be visible. You need to learn to see, and everyone needs to see, and everyone needs to be on the same page. But if it becomes too complicated, then you, you split it, obviously, for, for your purpose, right? 
Thanks for the talk, Alexander. Um, for startups that are literally at day one, what would you suggest are a couple of practical steps that they can take coming out of this session today, like one, two, and three, to get started with what you've just described here? Yeah, start your board with three columns. To do, doing, done. Put everything in to do. Would you recommend a specific tool for a day one? Would you say Trello? Trello? Yeah, yeah Trello. cool, right. And yeah, it's free, just because it's free and it's, it's beautiful. Yeah. Awesome. And second one, for a team that's been doing this for six months and isn't finding it's working quite the way they want, what would you suggest they adopt as uh, some patterns or techniques to start improving or fixing the challenges that they have for their board that now has seven states and disagreement about what the states do and stories that aren't quite written the way that everybody can comprehend? Where would you start for a pattern for an organization that is doing this but not well or as well as they could be? Awesome. That, that's the awesome result of, of the visualization of the work. People having problems, people arguing, people asking questions. That's what you want. That's the purpose of it. When you put everything on the board, everyone understands, oh, I disagree. That's what you want. That, that's, you achieved your goal with, with the system, right? When we start conversation and then you come to agreement, you know, that's a separate process, how, how you do it, whatever, whatever your company, whatever your you know, culture. But just make it visible, make everyone understand it, make people talk about this. And when you stand against the board and you point the finger, there's something to point the finger on and say, this is not right, this is not right. And people see it and they relate and you, you get on the same page. Yeah? Did I answer the question or I avoided? Are you a fan of retrospectives? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You, you, you have to, you have to, ah, yeah, okay, what I want to say. Uh, it's up to the team, pretty much, right? If you give autonomy to your people, to your team, to do the work they, they want to do, it, they're going to do a way better job. Instead of pushing these, you know, steps on them, you let it evolve. You start with three columns, then you add, 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 and then you say, oh, there's too many, and you maybe remove them. It, it, it's all experimentation, but it's sort of grassroots from, from the team, whatever team feels like, how they want to do it, just let them do it. But have clear definition of done. Everyone should understand what does it mean to be done? When do I move this? It needs to be clear and written and everyone should understand that. And when you write it's done, then you start arguing about this and, and you know, evolve it. That's the like, the writing it down, do you agree? Yeah. 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 Hey, Alexander. So thank you for your talk. It was lovely. So uh, I have experience of around three years of product management. And the common thing I've faced with all of the engineers is that when you talk about, you talked about value and then executing it, and then you talked about shipping it into uh, like small batches. So problem with that sometimes is like, where do we define that? If, how small batch can deliver value? Because as many chunks you break it into, and the first chunk is in that valuable to the customer, right? So like, what's the balance and how do you maintain that balance? Because that is the common thing, that after one week, we're thinking of value, del delivering value, but since it's such a small chunk, we don't deliver value. So how do we deal with that? So value might be in your learning. I usually think about this. What am, am I going to learn by, by doing this work. You know, well, I start with hypothesis. That's my hypothesis. I think if, if I do this, this is gonna happen. You have your metrics to know like if you're gonna hit it or not up front, and then you do absolute minimum work required to prove or disprove that hypothesis. You want to get to learning outcome as, as fast as possible, right? Especially for startup, you want to, deal with uh, uncertainty, right? What's the most uncertain thing? What's the pricing most valuable? Okay, you might not deliver value to your customer with this little thing, but you learn, yeah? You get some learning, you get some feedback, and then you improve because that feedback loop continuously improving, you know? And yeah, that, that's obviously value, yeah, because when you reduce uncertainty, now you know what's working, what's not. For example, right, you run some experiments and you say, yeah. Um, I wouldn't say something else, but uh, sorry. 
Who else has got a question? Just hands up, so I know where I'm going in this. So two more, need two more here. Good morning. Thank you for the presentation. Um, I work for an event, technical events planning agency, and we run two to three events per week. And we've just implemented Trello. And what we're seeing is that we're going to end up with a lot of boards, because at the moment we're looking at creating a board specific for each project. And within each project might be 20 or 30 tasks. Are we on the right track? Are we like, is that right that we're going to end up with potentially 100 boards within our Trello? Or is there a better way to be looking at uh, running the business with lots of small projects? Yeah, whatever works. Whatever, whatever works, works for you. Yeah, yeah. Just try, experiment. The most important thing to start. When you start, you see what doesn't work and you change. Even, like I said, to do, doing, done, start with that. Even that to do column, that's what I'm going to say. It's very important, like when you have an idea. It's, oh, I have an idea. And you always want to jump into idea. It's like next shiny thing, right? But what you do is you put it on the card and you, you prioritize, put it on the board, to do. Usually what happens with to-do, it grows and grows and it never gets done. It, you never get to the bottom. But that's okay, because you took things out of your head, which you were thinking, and you put it in writing somewhere, and you, in your head you think, oh, I dealt with this. You know? It's not going to bother you anymore, because it's written on a card, and it goes into done, never gets done, but that's fine. You, you're free to do something else. Just, just on that note, I think... Um, you're actually right, it's about what size works for you and your company because I think it's also around like the information architecture level that you want to kind of keep. Do you want to keep all the information at the, the event level or do you want to bring it up and have everything up there? And that's different for every organisation. So, um, do you want to see it across the board? Like what projects, what projects, you know, have that view of every project instead of having to go into a board? Yeah, that's what we're struggling with, but it's also like there's so many tasks to be done. <coughs> within a project and different people do those yeah. In Jira, there are layers, actually. There are Apex features, user stories, and tasks. And there will be different boards. And uh, let's say feature, when you deal with feature, there are a bunch of tasks. And they move in, on the different boards, but they all aligned. So the, the levels. When yeah. we start, we use Planner, because it's Microsoft, this included in Microsoft. And we kind of gone through the same journey as you. We kind of went, oh, shit, we've got, you know, hundred of different pieces in our boards and we went all with, oh, we'll change it to monthly to see this is how we're doing it, move it back. And I think you've got to go through that payment process to work out what works for you and your business. It's like there's no set cookie cutter. Mm -hmm. You've got to go, oh, shit, this is not working because we're not getting stuff done. It's almost kind of the total opposite. And then you kind of phase it through and go, right, this is the right size for us and our organisation. We'll start working out and you take that and you, you apply it a bit. <coughs> Uh, lucky last. I'll explain the good talk very good. I have a question because I was always working with analyzers, uh, robots, over automated. So I understand this for zero industry, you know, there's no Mura, no Muda, no Muri, you know. I agree, it's no waste. Mm -hmm. But what is your view on multitasking? How much you can multitask on the move, pushy multitask, you know, high throughput? I believe it's working or not. Yeah, like it depends what, what you do. In, in, in development, software development, that's my background, you really need to be in a zone. Like they say it takes 20 minutes to get into this zone. And if you interrupt it, you go out and then it takes another 20 minutes to get back to, to your work because it's very you know, difficult work. Um, you, you cannot, you cannot multitask, right? Yeah, just switch tasks, that, that's what you do. And maybe you switch tasks quickly and the small, like uh, when I'm doing management work, yeah, I, I learn to switch quickly because uh, I have my other tools to, to especially a yeah, board, because I, I don't think, you see, that, that board, uh, what it helps me not thinking what's next. I only focus what I'm doing now. Yeah, this meeting, this next meet, next meet, next meet, and I just push them through. Yeah, you're looking at the, you know, like, where is the border between switching and, and, and changing? Because you can do like this. Yeah, if you can switch quickly, but yeah, people, individuals, they did different. And that's why you have a pool system. But that pool system accommodates for everyone. Like uh, when you finish your work, you want to have a break, you want to have a coffee, or you want to just jump straight in into the next one. That's up to you. You, you pull the next work and, and you're in control. Yeah, and I think that's the best uh, approach. Yeah, thanks. Perfect. Thank you very much. Ooh, cool. Thank you guys. Yeah. Awesome.
Thanks so much, Alex. That was an awesome presentation. And uh, yeah, I know I've got a, some stuff to discuss with the team when we want to get back to the office today. How about you guys? Are you going to implement any new processes or Kanban stuff? Seeing some nodding heads? Good, good. Awesome. Who do we have on next, Scott? Oh, you know what? We've got a guy called James Bryant, and he's going to come and talk to us about... I think the pending title is uh, How Fear is Fucking You Over. But we'll see. It's a bit How what? Sorry? <laughs> Fears. Fears. Oh. So, you know, there's a lot of reasons why we don't get out of bed every day and, uh, you know, attack what we need to attack. And he's, yeah, basically going to help us in a similar vein. How do we get shit done every day? Um, so, yeah, I know that's a very general description, but we'll have more, more information coming soon. So that'll be up on meetup.com soon. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, Founder Sundowner is the next week and hope to see you all there at No Man Brewery. We're going to throw this back into our co-working space. So while we do that, help yourself to the food, courtesy of Keep Space, grab a coffee from Joey Zazz's, thanks to Tech Hunt, and uh, get to know each other. Thanks so much for coming. Brilliant. Thanks. Cheers.